France closes mosques for radical preaching. On December 28th, France's interior minister, Gerard Darmanin, announced uh, that a mosque in uh, Beauvau, I don't know how to pronounce French, so you guys are going to have to deal with this, <laughs> uh, in Beauvau, uh, northern France, was ordered to shut down for six months. The administration initiated the process of shutting down the mosque in mid-December due to reports of sermons spreading violent and hateful messages targeting Christians, Jews, and the LGBTQ community. An official document given to a French state-owned news agency stated that the reason for closing the mosque was, quote, for stalling an act of terrorism, using code and language for YouTube, we're talking about violent extremism, for stalling yeah, acts of know, YouTube doesn't like us when we use the T word. Okay, but go on. Yeah. For stalling acts of terrorism being committed. Uh, Samin Blovaki, the counsel, the lawyer for the mosque, stated that the imam who held the sermon was suspended. He added that the mosque has always fought terrorism and always favored living together. The interior ministry said that around one out of every 26 mosques and Muslim prayer halls were investigated this month under suspicion of spreading separatist ideology. Um, so I wanted to I cover this because I support this. Um, in a lot of we, we've been talking over the past year since 2020, really, about um, uh, France's moves, big reforms that they're making to prevent Islamic separatism. And one of the ways that they're doing this is they are monitoring mosques in a new way. They're monitoring funding. They're monitoring sermons, other stuff. And they are, it, the law that they enacted allows them to close mosques altogether. And this was an instance of that that caught a lot of um, attention. Okay, assuming, like, let's just be mindfully, like, let's just be, put some skepticism on this. Okay, like, let's just not endorse this 100% because there's always a chance that they are overdoing it. But assuming that the proper investigation was done and this was, um, because I don't like France is not just close, doesn't close down mosque willy nilly just because they're mosque, right? Like they don't just go and close down a mosque just because they're Islamic or there's a, like, there's plenty of mosques in France. Okay. And most of them don't have issues. I mean, most of them are not being shut down. Okay. So I'm assuming, okay. And this is, I, I, I can't be 100% sure. I'm just uh, applying a comes razor. Okay which could be completely there's there's a chance that this could be wrong but i'm assuming there was something there uh, and there was there was it was completely legit for these mosques to be closed down and i'm happy that france doesn't fuck around you know what i mean like france doesn't be like it's not your religion just because it's a religion we're not going to like if, if another organization that was not based on religion was spreading ideas like this they would be shut down okay so just because now you're a religious institution, you don't get privilege, you don't get special treatment, you get shut down, okay? So yeah, I'm happy that, I'm, I, I think like, what do you think? I think I endorse this, you know. What would you this. say to the people who say that this is a violation of France's secularism? And I mean, if their well, high value on free speech and free expression. Um, are not are, are these masks not government fund like tax exempt and shit, stuff like that? You mean are they tax exempt? Yeah, I yeah. don't actually know how that works in France. I would assume so if it's anything can, like here. Can you take a look? Yeah, I'm I'm assuming as well. So therefore, this is not a free speech violation. This is like an extension. Like your this is like you're being supported by the goddamn government your tax exempt like this is not like a public park or something like that so this is an extension i don't know like somebody f there in it says inciting violence i don't think inciting violence that's not protected under free speech no. also no, like huh i said i agree with you inciting violence is not or protected 
free speech. Yeah, but also I think like there's a difference between like for example, imagine if McDonald was teaching its employees to be anti LGBT. I think like if you investigate McDonald's for that, <laughs> by that's just, that's the same thing as like, you know, mm, I think there's a difference between that and just people being able to say things on their own. Like if if you have an institution like spreading, I don't know, are they tax exempt? Let me. Okay, I found one answer. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is one thing off the internet. I could be corrected. It says, in France, unless they are the property of the state, usually big cathedrals like Notre Dame that are major tourist spots, mm -hmm. in which case they will be granted pensions for maintenance and ex exploitation. I don't know what that means, but they pay granted, they're granted pensions for maintenance, but they do pay taxes. Oh, they do pay taxes. Hmm. Okay. So it, it, it so them sh shutting down these mass mosques then is going to have to depend on what exactly was the nature of what they were spreading. Okay. Um, I don't think that if you're a private institution that is not like completely separate from the government and stuff, I don't think you should be able to get shut down for just hateful comments. You know, I don't think that's that's a that's ground for the government to get involved and shut you down, right? But if you if if you're inciting violence, then that goes that is like a crime, right? So let me see. It says that use violent and hateful comments targeting Christians, Jews, members of. Okay, no. So this is beyond hateful. Okay, LGBTQ community. This could be used as inciting a threat to the lgbt community okay so i i would hold judgment it has to we have to look at like we we don't have access to the nature of what the comments were like right so i do not know you, you know so I, i'm just going to claim ignorance what do you think like do you think like be, between you know this is like a secularism or free speech right so like i don't think like if you have like so somebody like i think puya in the live chat was mentioning chick-fil-a right like chick-fil-a has like anti some some i don't know lgbt stance or stuff like that right you can't just the government can't just get involved like in a properly secular country you can't just the government can't just come and get involved and be like oh yeah we're shutting you down because of your anti-lgbt stance right that's not a government shouldn't be able to do that and if these mosques uh, are completely private and they're not like a supposed to be a public good and they're paying taxes and stuff like that then hateful comments i think should not be enough for the government to come and be able to shut you down these are completely okay i was looking more into it i'm getting conflicting yeah. information it actually mm -hmm. appears that churches religious institutions in france may be tax exempt so okay please so someone from france correct us but um mm -hmm. I want to give a little so bit the, of context about what this person was actually saying. Okay, so let me just tell you, it depends on two factors, whether they're tax exempt or not. If they're tax exempt, the government has every right to come and shut you down, okay? You are supposed to be a public good. You're an extension of the government. And if you're actually causing harm, it's not a violation of your free speech you uh, uh, for you to be shut down, okay? Because you're not just an independent private organization, okay? But if, you, you, if you're a private institution that pays taxes, um, then it's going to depend on two things. Were you just being hateful? Then if you're just being hateful, your hateful speech is protected under spe free speech. But, are, but if you're directly inciting be becoming a threat or directly inciting violence towards a group of people, um, then even if you're a private independent institution, then it could even in that situation, it could become illegal and that's not going to be a violation of your free speech. So it depends on whether you're taxed or not, or and the nature of the hateful speech. But go on. Um, so for context, uh, the mosque says that the imam that was giving the sermon was not someone that was part of like their permanent leadership, but this was someone who was basically giving sermons volunteer on a voluntary basis. And this person mm -hmm. was um, apparently giving sermons that others report as inciting hatred, violence, and defending jihad. Um, he was also, yeah, he he called jihad a duty, glorified jihadis as heroes, and labeled 
non-Muslims as enemies. Um, there was a document yeah. that was released. That's pretty, the, that's, pre that's pretty. The press direct. saying, um, the terrorist threat remains at a very high level and the closure, meaning the closure of the mosque had the aim of, yeah, forestalling acts of terrorism being committed. Um, the French government announced earlier this year that it would set up checks and balances of places of worship and associations suspected of spreading radical Islamic propaganda. Um, the interior ministry said that th this month that around 100 mosques and Muslim prayer halls out of a total of France's more than 2,600 have been investigated over recent months because of suspicion they were spreading separatist ideology. Currently, six sites are being probed with the view of closing them down based on these new laws of extremism and Islamist separatism. I saw another source that said um, that there were, so yeah, over 2,600 places of worship for Muslims across the country. And then there were 99 that were investigated recently. Uh, of these 99, 21 have been closed and six are in, pr in the process of being closed. And this is another quote from the interior minister. Quote, we also found that 36 of these mosques had accepted the demands of the Republic, meaning France as a nation, either to leave a particular federation or to separate from the imam whom we consider dangerous, or to stop foreign yeah. funding, or unfortunately to combine these provisions. So like if they fail to do this, then we remove them from the list. Okay, this is, seems like pretty, um, like France is doing this very responsibly, okay? So the, the, the stuff that you mentioned the imam said seemed to be very direct calls to violence, okay? Like even if you're a, completely private institution um, that pays taxes and is separate from the government and everything like that. Like, that's not like, oh, we're just being homophobic or transphobic or bigoted. This is like a direct call for violence, okay? So I think that is, it's not like a, it's not like a free speech issue. It's like literally promoting, like that's a crime. That's a direct uh, invitation to violence, right? Also, it seems like France is doing this very responsibly as well, because it seems like the, the mosques are getting an opportunity to fix things before they get shut down, right? And mosques, many mosques are complying, right? They're like, get rid of this guy. And the mosque could be like, okay, we're going to get rid of this guy. Or like, don't get funding from, like, we're not going to shut you down. We're going to first ask you to not get foreign funding. Thank you very much. And the mosques are like, okay, we can comply and stay and like not get shut down. Mm -hmm. So this is like, I think like France is doing this very, it seems again, maybe like, maybe if we look into this more, we're going to find out that it's not the case, but to, it seems like France is doing this very responsibly. So I, yeah. I mean, I, so that's what it looks like. Yeah. The interior minister also gave more context to this. He said that the man was presented as an occasional speaker, like I just said, but the reality is he was a regular imam and that he made yeah, remarks that glorify uh, jihad. But then here's where the the rubber really hits the road, and where especially for France and France's attitudes, this is like the like hold up, stop everything. This is unacceptable. Quote: He is also said to have defended a quote rigorous practice of Islam and its superiority to the laws of the Republic. In addition, his remarks chastise miscreants and the miscreants and present Western societies is Islamic phobic. They also urged the faithful to break with the Republic, according to the authorities. Wow. So this is literally, if true, this is exactly what they're not tolerating. <laughs> no, this is separatist be behavior. This is, comp this is like, this is beyond free. This is illegal. This is like, um, it's, it's not a matter of protected speech or not protected speech. This is basically starting a separatist movement that is a crime in almost every country, right? Um, this is interesting. Rudrish is saying France gets secularism right, unlike India. Yeah, France gets it mostly right. Mostly right, yeah. Um, and this this comment is so wrong, so I had yes. to highlight it. Yeah, no Nobara is saying is say, hate towards others isn't free speech. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, we it might is. not like it, but it definitely is. Inciting <laughs> violence towards others is not. Isn't 
guys, what do you think free speech is supposed to be? Do you think free speech is the freedom of saying just good things? <laughs> like free speech is not hate towards others. Like it completely is. What do you, what, why is, why do people have this like weird understanding of free speech as just like the freedom of just saying beautifully, like flowery, like things that we agree with? Like, I don't understand. Like how, <laughs> what, do, how do you get, how do people get this uh, uh, impression that hate speech is not free speech? It completely is free speech. Um, they think, you we know what they think? We can discourage it. We can yeah. interpersonally and as a community discourage it. But in terms of the law. No, no but they think, you no, know, so you know what happens? People think when we say something is protected under free speech, they think like we're endorsing that speech. They think oh, like, oh, I we know, mean, it's so ridiculous. They f yeah, they think we're saying it's a good thing. Well, and actually, <laughs> that, 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 you know, a lot of people in most countries don't have the standard of free speech that America does, where hate speech actually, well, at it, it depends, but it's, theoretically protected right like there's a state level stuff um and so in many countries in their countries like hate speech actually is illegal like in india this is a huge thing this is partially what yeah. we got prosecuted well we didn't personally get prosecuted but what they were bringing against us is they're saying we're promoting enmity between communities that is legal in india yeah so yeah, i think we, we most don't people don't that. understand their context is telling them, oh, no, that actually is illegal. You can't do that. Um, Armin, somebody saying, Armin, they were making anti-Western values statements like gay, gay marriage. Why, why is gay not written? Why is there a star there? It's not marriage a slur. Star. It's not a, you don't gay, have to redact not a, gay. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's not an insult to say it's gay. Not Why the did you, know? you don't have to redact it. <laughs> why, why, is it? Why, are, why, why are you doing that? Uh, gay marriage and living out of wedlock. Okay, guys, that is not anti... Like, yeah, the, you get to do that. Guys, I don't understand. People think like we're supposed to... Like we're against this the speech that was being said because it was inciting violence, not because it was anti-Western. Like just because something is anti-Western, like or anti-gay, like even if it's things that we're against, if it's a speech, it should be protected. I don't understand how this is a very simple concept. I don't understand why people don't understand how free speech works. Um, like well, think free speech is not a like. Probably because most people don't actually have it where they live or they don't, they were never taught about it. Yeah. Okay. And some, somebody saying free speech is not absolute. I don't think we didn't say it's absolute because we, we just mentioned that inciting violence is one of those limitations, right? Like scams are also limitations to free speech, right? It's like, yeah, I don't understand. It, it okay. So, and also people. like. A AJ saying hate speech is illegal in Victoria, Australia. Yeah, so what we meant to say that free speech, hate speech shouldn't be legal. Like, I think, like, the model that we like the most is, like, illegal. the U.S. model. When it... What did I say? Hate speech illegal. shouldn't be. No, I just said hate speech shouldn't be illegal. That's what I said. I thought I it heard should it be illegal. legal. It, okay. It shouldn't be illegal. It should. Okay. Hate speech should be legal. Hate speech should be legal. Incitement to violence should not be legal, okay? Very clear. The US model, I think, is what we uh, like the most, okay? And it's been working for them very well. Um, <laughs> this made me laugh so hard. Music guy saying, <laughs> I have an asterisk on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just imagine him, and it says G asterisk <laughs> Y on his forehead. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh by the way, guys, another thing people don't understand about free speech is like they like they think like free speech means that social media platforms don't get to have community standards, right? Free speech is about the government's involvement, not about social media platforms, not about universities. It's like, oh, like for example, if you block somebody in the live chat, okay, they're like, Oh, we thought you were for free speech. Why are you blocking us if you're for free speech? Like, bitch, I'm not the government. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> me, me blocking you on the live chat does not violate your free speech unless I have been I, I didn't know I'm the president or something. You know what I mean? I'm not like, you're not being jailed. You're not being fined. You're not being tortured. You're not being killed. I'm, you're not being a, 
the gov free speech is about protecting you against the government controlling your speech okay anyways um wait there was another funny comment where did it go Oh yeah, not funny. Um, one of something I wanted to touch on. Mustafa is saying what can't be ignored is that anti-Muslim sentiments are on the rise in France. That is true, and we, because France is going through this big shift of talking about how do we deal with this real issue of separatism and uh, terrorist violence that we're seeing, and a lot of and but balancing the rights of a minority community, stuff has gone wrong along the ways. Like there was um, a motion that was passed in, I think the lower house of the assembly to ban um, hijabs for anyone under the age of 18, which is older than the age of consent to sex in France. You know, so that like, was in pass though. I don't believe it. it. It didn't go all the way through to being enacted into law. I, I don't believe so. Um, but those are instances is like, okay, this is something we oppose. Like this is authoritarian. This can't stand, you know? So things haven't gone just, you know, completely hunky dory along the way. There have been moments where, yeah, like the rights of this minority were going to be infringed upon. Yeah. But it's not just like when you say in France, we're just not talking just in France and the government, we're talking about people as well. Right. So, the, and we highlight that, like there was a knife attack on Muslims in France, in Paris, just because they were Muslim. Yeah, that happened um, like two days after Samuel Paty was beheaded. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously, yeah, we do, we do want to, that's why we're so mindful, uh, Mustafa, about like um, looking at the laws and not try, try to make sure that it's not like, they're not giving in to this anti-Muslim bigotry by the way, why is Muslim starred again? What's yeah, happening right now? I was election? making a joke because <laughs> any identity category, we put an asterisk on that. You can never be sure. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's it might be a slur. You don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, here's, Mustafa, here's when, when thing happens. Whenever there is like a radical attack like that is done by a Muslim, it's very unpopular for us to defend, for people to come and defend Muslims, okay? And that's exactly when you need to come and defend Muslims, okay? Because that's when everybody is on the same side, right? So for example, let's say somebody is a victim of Muslims, right? And emotions are high and everybody's angry. And then people are justifiably pointing at Islam as one of the elements that was responsible for a, hor for a horrible crime. But because everybody is passionate and angry, a lot of anti-Muslim bigotry and a lot of threat towards Muslims can just go under the radar and people are not going to be like, maybe right now it's not the time to question that because, you know, it, it was an, an Islamic attack just happened right now. Maybe now, now it's not a good time. But that's exactly the right time for you to point it out. Like, no, wait, that's actually anti-Muslim bigotry because that's exactly the time that Muslims are at the greatest possible risk because so many people are like just passionate and just want to like get revenge or something. Right. So and when everybody is going in that direction, it is our job to come and like tell people like, hey, that's anti-Muslim bigotry. Hey, that's anti -Muslim. you're going too far. Just, you know, so. So, yeah, it's important to point that out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now everything is being started. Amazing. What <laughs> what have you started? <laughs> Stop. We need to redact Atheist Republic. <laughs> but it's it already there. Yeah. It's in the tag. Oh, shoot. Okay, yeah, it's in the tag. <laughs> It reminds me when there's like usually Fail. someone who's like very sensitive and kind of like safe spacey that kind of mentality who when they really don't like you like in their tweets about you they'll put asterisks so that you can't search their your name and like find what they're saying about you <laughs> like your name becomes a slur and they need to redact it i was like that's when you know you've made it when someone's like oh susanna but like <laughs> it's redacted like Okay, I want to highlight this. It's funny, it's funny because I want to respond to this. Hindutva Susanna saying, wish I had the privilege to speak like Armin and Susanna about secularism and free speech by sitting in a country where Muslim population is not even 5%. First of all, Hindutva Susanna, I was speaking about secularism and free speech this way when I was living in Iran. So, fuck you. Uh, secondly, and Duke Look Susanna how... would never be that bold. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Hendrix for Susanna. Look at that. Look at this. Five percent Muslim population. So you're saying like 
freedom of speech and secularism could be thrown at the window once the Muslim population gets to a certain level. Like, holy crap, like, if you can't, if you cannot see how toxic Hindu ideology has become, that demog the, the percentage of demographic, like that's how they assess threat levels <laughs> by percentage of population. Well, Hindu for Susanna, most, the Muslim population in Malaysia is higher right now than in India, and they're doing better than India. So I don't know what you're talking about. So, yeah, not that that not that Islam is a good thing. Islam is a negative influence on on Malaysia, but. Right now, the greatest th threat to India is not Islam. The greatest threat to India, as we're speaking right now, is Hindutva. Um, wait, what did I say? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, wow. My name. Uh, guys, no, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jesus. They're everywhere now. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.